visitors to Redcliffe on a peninsula just north of Brisbane may not be aware it might have become the state capital, as it was the site of the first white settlement in what became Queensland. The Australian continent had already been inhabited for tens of thousands of years when Lieutenant James Cook visited its east coast in 1770 during a remarkable voyage around the world. He raced the Union Jack in what he called Botany Bay, claiming Australia for Britain. From there, he continued to chart the coast as he travelled north, and roughly 800 kilometres later, he named Morton's Bay, but did not enter. Further north, he almost lost his ship after holding it on the Great Barrier Reef, but managed to nurse it to shore near Cooktown, repair it, return to England and report his findings. For almost two decades, the newly claimed territory was pretty much ignored until England realised it had more prisoners than accommodation and decided to ease overcrowding in the prison hulks, which were used to ease overcrowding in the jails, by sending some convicts to settle the newly claimed land. In 1788, 12 ships with their cargo of convicts and guards entered Botany Bay. But Captain Arthur Phillips soon realised the site was unsuitable and established the new colony some kilometres to the north at what is now Sydney. The colony struggled to feed itself over the next few years, not helped by England sending more convicts. Most had committed only minor offences, but a few continued to cause trouble. To solve some of these problems and help assert dominion elsewhere in the continent, Various remote colonies were established to house the more wayward convicts. Exploration of the continent that would be known as Australia was ongoing, and in 1799, Matthew Flinders and a crew of eight sailed the Norfolk six days north from Sydney to arrive in what was then recorded as Morton Bay. He explored and mapped the area for two weeks, recording the Pumastone River, which we now know to be a passage, and noted Red Cliff on a peninsula to its southwest. John Oxley had already explored substantial areas in New South Wales when, nearly a quarter of a century after Flinders, he set sail in the Mermaid to scout for new places to send troublesome convicts. He entered Morton Bay and stumbled upon some castaway, ticket-of-leave convicts who had been living for months with the Ningi Ningi people. They were able to guide him south in the bay to the mouth of a river he named the Brisbane. Earlier, they had mistakenly entered the area Oxley named Deception River, now called Pine River. The castaways returned with him to Sydney. The next year, on the 12th of September, 1824, Oxley returned aboard the Amity to establish the first European settlement in the bay, near the Red Cliff. The area had long been home to the Ningi Ningi people, who called it Cowan Cowan. Their ceremonial Bora Ring nearby would later see that area called Kipper Ring. Also on board the Amity were Lieutenant Henry Miller to take up his post as Commandant of Morton Bay Settlement and 21 soldiers, including nine with wives and families. They guarded 29 convicts who would over the next eight months, build their own jail and the rest of the settlement. The ship stood offshore and a small party rode to the beach near the present jetty to look for water. Initially disappointed, they followed what is now Humpy Bong Creek further from its mouth, which now exits from under a car park. About 800 metres upstream, they found fresh water in lagoons just southeast of the present museum, fed by a tea tree swamp where the paceway is now. Initially, the locals were tolerant of the newcomers, but later, as Oxley was departing with Alan Cunningham to explore further up the Brisbane River, a few made off with some of his equipment, most of which was later recovered. Oxley later returned to his family near Sydney, where he died four years later, aged 42. There is some conjecture on functions and locations of settlement buildings, but most were within the area now bounded by the Shoreline, Anzac Avenue and Humpy Bong Creek. Trees were blazed along the line to the east of the creek to indicate a boundary. Anzac Avenue now runs past the site where a five-room 
prefabricated cottage was erected for the Commandant, office of the museum. It was likely the site of the first white berth in Queensland. Other buildings were sited further north along the contour, possibly to aid future water connection, and their construction began initially using split logs. Later, a clay source was discovered to the southeast of the present museum, and a brick kiln was built nearby. Some of the bricks it produced have since been found as far away as Brisbane. Soldiers' barracks, which would also accommodate the wives and family of married men, were built in the northwest corner of what is now a car park adjacent to the physio centre. A guard house was built to the west of John Street. The Ambassador Hotel now stands to the east of what was the main prisoner's compound. A well, brick paving, leg irons and other relics were uncovered during the construction of its car park. Blue Water Square now covers the area where the whipping tree once stood. They built a storehouse in the area across the street from today's information centre at the end of the jetty. As you pass the BG statue today, it might prompt a thought about what Redcliffe was like when they grew up nearby. Then you could think back 200 years and consider what faced the group of about 70 that stepped ashore on the nearby beach. The peninsula was certainly no holiday camp. Discipline was harsh, food production was difficult, and water became scarce. Over time, the Aboriginals became more hostile, eventually killing a young soldier. Gradually, it was realised that the area would be unsuitable in the long term, and after eight months, the colony was moved to a new site, leaving behind their empty huts. The Aboriginal term Humpy Bong roughly translates as dead huts. The new site chosen became known as Brisbane.